Welcome to Faith, Reason, and Geekdom. I'm your genuflexer, Roger. My brothers and sisters in Christ, join me every week as we work out these three perspectives in our everyday lives. That's what I call Christian genuflexing. Thank you, thank you all. Welcome. We got Father Brandon Berg in the building today. Finally, we got you. How you been doing, Father? Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Yes. I am. Uh, I'm in the the spiritual building because I'm not in the physical building. But yes, I'm. Uh, you know, my my slogan is best day ever. So that's how I'm doing today. Metaphorically, you're in the building, right? <laughs> <laughs> amen. Oh man. So if you just want to give a brief introduction, me and you met a few months, several several months ago. And uh, I, I guess we'll save that story for another time, <laughs> but because uh, I want to get into your kind of a brief little introduction about who you are, how you got into the life, and then we're going to jump into our first from the faith perspective tips and advice for anyone discerning the religious life. So, and we'll mm-hmm. save our story how we met a kind of little a, a little um, yeah. providence. God's pro- I call it God's providence that we met yeah. and how we met. We'll get into that. But uh, we've been speaking and doing a Zoom and texting and calling and seeing each other several several months. So finally, the first official podcast. I'm so excited, <laughs> so excited. Uh, the only thing I wish is I'm trying to grow a beard right now, and it's oh. nowhere going to be near yours at all, <laughs> like at all. Uh, so, so episode probably episode uh, three hundred and. 20, then maybe it would be some resemblance of that, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. So I'm glad you're here. So yes, please. Yeah. We all have our different gifts and abilities from God. Mm -hmm. So yes, Yes, I have a Swedish and Norwegian uh, in my dad's side of the family. So I call this my Viking uh, warrior beard. Mm. So yeah. So Roger, uh, yes, my name is uh, Brandon Berg. I am a brother in the Capuchin Franciscan Religious Order, and I'm now also a priest. Mm -hmm. Um, I was ordained last year on August 15th of 2020 in the midst Mm -hmm. of our wonderful pandemic world. And I believe we met in June too, because you weren't uh, officially, you hadn't been officially ordained. You were a brother. No. And then a, was, like a month yeah. or two. Yeah. Well, I had had the, I had had the first step of ordination. Mm-hmm. I'd had the mm-hmm. deacon ordination. Yes. Excuse me. But yeah, I hadn't, uh, hadn't arrived to the priesthood ordination mm-hmm. yet. So yeah. And that interim there. Um, so who am I? What am I doing? Um, I am uh, originally from Kansas. You know what we say about Kansas? It's a good place to be from. Not so, recently in not the Super in Bowl. Kansas anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, yes, that's Kansas yeah, got, City. Never mind. Wait a minute. We, I'm getting confused. <laughs> no, I mean, that's the first word in Kansas City is Kansas. So, mm, yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I'll claim it so, <laughs> for sure. No, I was a huge Chiefs fan growing up, so it's great oh. to see them get back to the big game again. It was a little, little more depressing than last year. But mm. uh, <laughs> uh, Tom Brady is the ultimate uh, competitor good catholic so. too he's a he's a catholic I he's hear very that. boston yeah. yeah yep so i uh born and raised in kansas uh my parents divorced at a young age and i'm the only child um uh, my mother got full custody so mm. i was raised by my mother in a small town in northeast kansas i grew up catholic but um fell away from the faith in college but then also came back to the my catholic faith in college um, through good friendships, through I was at a Catholic college uh, through the example of the monks, and there was a monastery there on campus in Northeast Kansas, Benedictine College. So yeah, I came back to my faith, and I guess we'll get into more details of this mm-hmm. too, probably someday. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I entered into a design, time of discernment after college, um, more so about uh, where to live my life. So my friends and I, we had our master plan, which was to uh, play in a band. We had our day jobs, and we played in our band at night and practiced. And that was good for a while. Um, And then it was kind of the stereotypical where there were five of us, and then we got down to four, then we got down to three. (laughs) And then finally I was kind of the one to break it up for good. I 
I was working in the restaurant business and I had a big decision whether to work for my uncle in the big city or move with my dad to a little town of 600 people and open a restaurant. Mm. So that was really that was really the opening of God's will into my life where I had to pray to God to show me what to do. And in the midst of asking, you know, which restaurant to work at or which city to live in, uh, God called me to the priesthood. And he called me praise pretty God. powerfully. And yeah, praise God. And kind of in a way I was uh, unable to deny. So that really began the whole turning point of my life. Um, yada, yada, yada. A few years later, I found the Franciscans, the Capuchins specifically. Uh, fell in love with the fraternity, uh, the prayer life amongst the brothers, uh, the contemplative aspect. And yeah, that was basically it. Um I moved to Denver, Colorado, where I'm currently at in 2009. I did postulancy. I was a novice in California. I made my final vows back in Kansas. I studied theology in San Antonio, Texas, mm-hmm. where I met mm-hmm. our yeah. wonderful host and creator, yes, Roger. Met. Yep. And now I'm back in Denver after ordination, doing my first year as a priest uh, in a parish called Annunciation. So, boom, drop wow. that. That that is podcast. crazy. I would be a little bit disappointed if you guys didn't at least consider calling your band Monk Ferd and Sons. At least, <laughs> right, come on, tell me somebody just Monk Ferd and Sons. Ferd and Sons. I get <laughs> instead it. of Monk Ferd and Sons. Yes, I would be. Tell me somebody just brought it up. Just <laughs> well, in the passing, uh, at least. <laughs> I think you know, like that was going on. Mumford and Sons, they were probably still in high school or something like, so this was, uh, I graduated oh, okay. college <laughs> yeah, well, that's... been like 20 years now. I graduated <laughs> college in, uh, 2002. Mm-hmm. So we started the band that year, 2001, 2002. And then I think we finally broke up for good. I think 2000, early 2005. So I wasn't a monk and I don't think Mumford and Sons existed <laughs> yeah. yet. So it will, will we, did there... have some, we, we did have some fun names though. Uh, one could, of the could you names share some of them? Sure. One of the names was kind of like a sciencey name. So there's a word in like ancient physics for what something lost when it changed state of being. So like if you burn a log, all that's left is uh, ashes. They say that it lost phlogiston. Oh, okay, never mind. I was thinking of something else. But yeah, I know there's yeah. some. Yeah. So there's probably other words, but oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. So we were we were blue phlogistum. We changed the last mm. letter to M instead of M. Blue phlogistum. Yeah. That BP sounds like for yeah, sure. That sounds like a like a like a car company or something in Germany, like a, some <laughs> type right. of of you know of efficient you know hybrid <laughs> kind of hybrid uh-huh. kind of thing. I like it. There but um, man, the and the, then the... Uh, it gets better too. So oh. and then after that. <laughs> Uh, some things happened and some of the members changed or whatever. And, and we, uh, changed to of the cave or OTC for short, which mm, is based cave. off Plato's, uh, the cave, yeah. the cave from the Republic. So, yeah. I like yeah. that from the Republic, the cave. I, I, that's a really good one. I've actually never heard something like that, but that, that's actually, I like that. I, I like that from the Republic, but tell me this, uh, Father Brandon, will we yep. see, or when will we see the VH1 specials, the behind, behind the uh-huh. band, I'm sorry, behind the uh-huh. band where they show, they break up, they get back together, they break up. They <laughs> when are we going to see the VH1 behind yes. the band of Father Brandon uh, Berg? Never? Or... Ho- hopefully never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Oh, no, man, we that have, was great. Uh, we have talked about great, a reunion. Great. Actually, mm. I try to keep in touch with the guys, but um, yeah, we're not so good about it, but um Yes, yeah, one of are. the one of the guys, uh, Jeff, is still a monster. Uh, he's been studying guitar hours and hours a day for about twenty years now. He's he's somewhat of a master. And then uh, I think Joe is still pretty good, and uh, Kurt I think still plays the bass, and Marcelo still sings, uh, not professionally, but uh, colloquially, or mm. <laughs> if you will. <laughs> and uh, I still have my drum kit, but unfortunately, well, so you're I don't... the drummer. They're usually the bad it. boy. That's usually like the bad boy <laughs> of the group. <laughs> yeah, I don't have it set up right now. So yeah, I can imagine them being in there, be like, "Well, a father, uh, uh, Brandon Berg, uh, so that, that's your that's your second beer already." <laughs> like, I can imagine like a religious order style of like it's not it won't be like Motley Crue, but that's like the, the oh yeah, two beers, two. You know, I can imagine like the Motley Crue, but but the uh, uh, a brotherhood of the Franciscans yes. kind of. Oh, uh, well, so, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Motley crew, holy crew, but, um, or Motley, 
holy gra- what is it there oh that's monty python that's right ah, there's something yeah. in there that i think we could work out <laughs> what what are some tips or advice that you would have for somebody who's discerning uh the religious life it, whether it be you know anything in the religious life because it's not just a priesthood but maybe uh, or uh being a brother in an order or like what are tips and advices that you would mm-hmm. give to somebody yeah that's a good question you know um what do I want to say? First of all is... Uh, don't start a van. <laughs> don't, don't start a van. No, like, uh, I mean, I, I think what you're, you know, um, I mean, yeah, if you're if you're seriously uh, pursuing religious life, yeah, don't start a band at the same time. But like, you know, uh, I think one of my understandings of religious life was that, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, what I want to say is that God is going to use any and all of your talents. Mm. So, like, if you are a good musician, like, God may use that. If you are a good musician, God may ask you to give that up, and your religious order may have you do something else. But I think the, you know, one of the images of religious life, especially from the past, was like a. Because it used to be in the past where, like, every single person who entered a religious order, like, got a new name. Yes. So you would, everyone okay. would take a religious name. Because it was basically like a like a dying to your old self and becoming this new person. Makes sense. Yeah. So. Makes sense, yes. Some of, that has, some of that has changed, though. So now there are certainly a good number of orders that uh, where every single sister or brother gets a new name, but uh, not all of them. Like I, I have my baptismal name still. It's pretty close. Saint's name, anyways. Saint Brendan of Ireland. Okay. I'm Brandon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So basically the same mm-hmm. thing. But um, sort of the theology has changed, or one of the ways of viewing the theology of religious life has changed. It's not so much from a death to the past but a more complete living out of your baptismal vows. Okay. So now it's so now it's seen more as a, like a deepening of a baptism rather than like a dying and a rebirth, you know, to a new to be a new person. Let me ask so, you, oh, I'm sorry. Uh yeah. what is going to ask something no, too cuz uh, something popped in my head. Uh, no. something popped in my head right now. Would you would you say if you're discerning uh or thinking about discerning the the religious order should you separate yourself from people that are like both sides uh, encourage you and discouraging you? Or should you be open to both sides to hear like somebody's like, well, maybe that's not for you. You know, you're good about this. Or should you, you know, isolate yourself either way, like just hang around with nobody. Uh, most people or, or maybe somebody in, in the church that's that's kind of like helping you go along there. Or, or should you just be with your family? Like, what do you guys think? I know you guys don't want me to do this. Can you give me... Do you get what I'm trying to say? I don't know if I formed that right, but would you kind of yeah. like keep your options no, open you. to all people? Yeah, I mean it's a it's a you know when you when you do enter a, a sort of formal uh, stage of discernment, mm-hmm. it can be uh, confusing. Um, you know, especially if you're open about it, and like if your family and coworkers and friends know what's going on some people do experience resistance, you know? Oh yeah. Um, people, people don't understand sacrifice and don't understand religious life. But, um, yeah, I mean, if someone is extremely negative and very much trying to deter you from something that you feel is God's call in your life, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't listen to that person yeah. or be around like they're them. They're actively, more than I... you know, maybe they have an axe to grind against the church. Maybe, mm-hmm. you know, maybe they want to see, there are people like that. They want to see you fail or they want to see, you know, and they'll actively, they're not like, well, you know, you can do that, but, but think about that. They're like, act, then those people, you should definitely kind of stay away from those people. Yeah. Like, I mean, hardcore, yeah. or at least don't let their thoughts determine yours. Like yeah, if yeah. it's your parents or your I had a, I still have an uncle who I love dearly and he's kind of come around, but definitely early on, he was like, mm. don't you want to go to med school? Don't you want to get a family? Don't you want to have all this money yeah. and stuff? And, um, you know, and, and I, I think it, he wasn't trying to be mean. He just doesn't understand. Like he's not a, he's not a Catholic and he just mm, doesn't okay, understand. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, it, in a way, it just, uh, I think a little, uh, some resistance can be good because you have to really strengthen your call and do it from a pure motive. So, Is a, is a spiritual director almost a necessity for somebody discerning the, relig- the religious life? 
Mm-hmm. Would you say that that's uh, almost a necessity? I would say more than almost. Um, yes, a spiritual director is is crucial. I mean, I'm sure you can make it without it, but if there's any way possible to uh, find a priest or a nun or a holy layperson uh, to take you through uh, times of discernment and to help you ask those questions about what God is calling to in your life, then yeah, by all means, uh, avail yourself of that. Definitely, definitely. I think those uh, were good little quick tips to do that. Uh, you know, yeah, get uh, get somebody that can guide you. A spiritual director would be good. Uh, stay close to the priest, and and they'll help you guide. They'll tell you, you know, the real. And did you run into people that, from your experience, I know it might be different, but from your experience, did you find? Uh, maybe priests or other religious brothers or anyone that you went to or the church, like asking, like, I'm thinking about doing this. Did you find them to be like only like showing you the good side or saying, Hey, this is going to be tough. This is going to like, not, not discouraging you, but like being open, like saying, Hey, this is an important thing. Or were they just like, Oh yes, come join. Like from your experience, I know it might be different mm-hmm. from everyone, but what, what did you find in your journey? Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I think, people were were genuine um i didn't have anybody like just up front well i did have one actually um because i was looking at one order um thinking that they were better than the others in in some Mm. way and then this older priest that i knew was like well you know this was during the uh anyway it's still during the times of scandal but um Mm -hmm. This priest was like, well, you know, they've had their scandals, too. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah, they have um, some of their priests are actually in jail uh, still for some of the crimes they committed. And I was like, what? I didn't know. And then he's like, oh, yeah. And then this priest told me that one of the priests from his community was also in jail and they were paying out hundreds of thousands of dollars to victims. So, oh, yeah, I can um, see that. yeah, I mean, I think one of, you know, when, when you start looking at religious orders and things and discerning, it's really easy to get into that, like grass is greener on the other, on the side. other side. Yeah, um, I think we mentioned something about grass is greener on the other side when we, <laughs> when we had a talk. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, it's it's just uh, I guess the the thing that I would want to say the most is prayer. Like you just really have to pray um, in different ways. I think whatever way mm-hmm. is powerful to you. I was blessed uh, in my little town in Kansas to uh, not the little little town in the. Yeah, I was able to uh, in Atchison, Kansas. They have a twenty-four hour adoration chapel, oh, Eucharistic okay. adoration. So yeah, I was able to set up regular hours for that, and I was able to go when I had free time and just really pour out my heart before the Lord and um, ask Him to lead me and trust in His leading me. Um, and then, yeah, that was that's my the number one tip is prayer. Yes, the number two tip is. Um, spiritual direction mm-hmm. and the number three tip is uh you away have to look negative, at different negative orders. people yeah. yeah yeah move away from yeah. negative people yeah especially if you can yeah. and then mm-hmm. it, you know probably a fourth one is um a lot of people like to think about religious life and and they think they're discerning mm-hmm. but it doesn't really become discerning until you go and visit them yeah to do so your research, visit. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Okay. I yeah, exactly. Not in you know you do need to do your research on the internet and things, but definitely. Uh, I mean, I know some of that is hard in COVID days, but yeah. um, a lot of most orders are having in person events again, or some orders are doing like online retreats. We had one of those, or actually a couple of those last year. So, um, but yeah, definitely uh, stepping out of your comfort zone, um, getting to know the orders and visiting the different ones is really, I think, where the discernment begins. And see who has the coolest habits too, right? <laughs> see who has the coolest habits to wear. That, that's yeah. also a big, I, I know if I was discerning, I would say who has the coolest ones so I could wear, <laughs> see which ones I look good in and be like, yeah, I, I like yeah. those tips. Those are good, quick tips from uh, <laughs> Father Brandon Berg. Amen. So. Yes, Matt, from the reason, I want to talk about a little bit on our, our second topic is the, the reason from a little bit of a, a historical standpoint, St. Maximilian Kobe, great, great saint. I mean, he was born in Poland in 1894, yeah. dies yeah. in Auschwitz, 1941, and mm-hmm. we know his feast day is uh, August the 14th. Amen. Yes, and he's, a, I know, a fellow, a fellow brother, a Franciscan. How high is he on the, I guess, the Saint All-Star, I guess, you could, or, or, you know, the, the Saint All-Star team, you know, all NBA team where you get Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Duncan, all. 
How high is he? Is sure. he pretty high up there? I know all the Saints. Yeah. I mean, there's so many. I mean, there's <laughs> too many. But I as know. a Franciscan, uh, yeah. what are some things uh, that, that you learned about him? I don't know if you learned about him studying through history class or or just mm-hmm. uh, other formations. Uh, what are your thoughts on him and like how his life was in during you know the World War II and the the Nazi mm-hmm. concentration camps? Yeah, that's cool. Um, I suppose uh, Maximilian Colby, he's probably not a starter. <laughs> but yeah, well, there's sure, a lot. I'm, I mean, that's I'm not sure he's got that. a. I'm sure he's got a seat on the bench. The third you know, team, ready for, you know, all, all, all right. NBA, yeah, third team, <laughs> ready for when one of the starters needs a break. Mm-hmm, but, definitely. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the most. Uh, so I have a, a family friend. Um, and they got married on August 14th, oh. and they're super, super devoted to him. And uh, all of their kids have the middle name Colby. That's a cool name. Uh, I just want to say that. Just like yeah, Kobe, but Colby. Yeah. Like instead of Kobe, yeah. I, I, I would just want to say that's one of the coolest names. Maximilian Kobe. That's yeah. uh, awesome. That's a cool name. <laughs> Is like they, a nice well, yeah, name they, or something. I mean, none of them are named Maximilian, but they mm-hmm. all have the middle name. Yeah. <laughs> Colby. So I like that, cool. Colby. Yeah, so they were kind of like my – I mean, I had heard about them, I think, before that, but they, they really kind of uh, – were. it was cool to see a family be devoted to him and, and those aspects. Um, I think um, – so another introduction to him was if you go to outside of Chicago, uh, there's a seminary called uh, Mundelein, Mundelein Seminary. I think but I've then like in the – in the backyard of Mundelein is a big retreat center run by the conventional Franciscans. Mm. And they have, I forget what it's called right now. It'll probably come back to me after we end the show. (laughs) As usual. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, In their basement of this uh, retreat center, they have a museum of his Mm. and it has like uh, some of the clothes that he wore as a prisoner in Auschwitz and some of his personal stuff and some of his writings and different photos. So you things. can actually so go would... to a museum and see these, go to a history museum or that part of the history and actually see the items that he used, the, the, the outfit that, that Maxim, say Maximilian, Maximilian Kobe wore. That's pretty cool. You know, that's pretty cool. You see, I, they, I wish they had that like in, you know, the big World War II museums where they have the mm. Holocaust museum. That would be awesome if they, yeah. I mean, I may be wrong. Maybe there might be a piece, something, there might be from him that would be awesome because he's a big part of history uh yeah. but but un, uh kind of forgotten what he did and we'll, we'll kind of go into that a little bit shortly yeah. but what what he did but yeah that's awesome i didn't know that yeah. i did not know that yeah i didn't know that so then uh the next thing i would say where he's really become important in my life is um doing the consecration to mary hmm. uh according to um uh, michael gately hmm. He has the 33 days to morning glory. And he looks at uh, the four four big Marian uh, saints of our time. And is one of them Maximilian? Yeah, one of them is Maximilian Kolbe. And he goes into this whole, I mean, it's kind of a lot for, we'd have, probably have to do a whole show on it. Mm-hmm. But uh, he has a, one of his weeks is where you reflect on Maximilian Kolbe's spiritual, Marian spirituality. And it's all based on the Immaculate Conception. But of course, at uh, at Lords, where Mary says, "I am the Immaculate Conception," mm. and that this just like blows Maximian's call in mind. And yes. apparently, he he like meditates on it for years or decades, or even he does uh, research. You know, he mm-hmm. was a philosophy uh, doctor and a theology doctor, and uh, apparently, like just moments or hours before the Gestapo came and arrested him is when he had this like big revelation about Mary's connection with the Holy Spirit and how he calls Mary uh, the created Immaculate Conception, and Mm. he calls the Holy Spirit the uncreated Immaculate Conception. Mm -hmm. And just about how, you know, how much she was open to the Holy Spirit, uh, full of grace. I mean, she didn't just get some grace or like a lot of grace, like, Full. Yeah, full, like, full <laughs> like blown. all of it, like <laughs> more than every other creature who's ever had grace put together. Like if you add all of every other creature in the history of existence who's ever received grace, you add them all up and like Mary still has more. Yeah, 
that that's awesome just to meditate yeah. on i just imagine meditating I on that and he did he did start what was it the uh he was a founder of the knights of the immaculate uh immaculate conception or i think there's another name in latin or another term that they had but yeah, yeah. Um, militia immaculata yes 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 he was and their purpose was like to uh the the conversion of every person living in sin, heresy, schism, and especially Freemasonry and the growth mm-hmm. of holiness in all their something. And that's from the the order I found it on their their I think they had a little page or something. I just probably butchered that whole thing right there, but let's just skip that part. But yes, he was one okay. of the founders of the Knights. So yeah. I like that. But the his his story is so incredible because uh, in in Auschwitz in, in the camps he was in, you know, in during the the Holocaust and this is World War Two is like the biggest history thing whenever you say history most especially millennials and zoomers and and generation z they always think uh uh, pretty much is the world war ii you know so Mm -hmm. but people don't know the stories like when he uh uh, prisoners escaped and they escaped from the prison uh the the nazi guards they wanted to make an example they wanted to make an example out of people to deter people hey you're not going to escape again so they just chose these people these groups of these horrified imagine they've been through a lot already these horrified prisoners to be starved to death so it's not just just you know killing which some of them might have been like yes just you know firing squad take me out but these to be starved to death you know that's that's incredible and uh, yeah. one of the w- one of the prisoners was begging for his life you know i, I have kids and Maximilian Kobe saw this and he was like overcome and he took his place and he told the begs the guards for him to take his place. So I think in cell block 11, they, they went down there and they, they starved and he lasted like one the longest out of anybody while he yeah. was there. He was ministering, praying to them, all right. confed, like just talking to the guards, doing all this stuff that would make him a heroic saint that we know today. Yeah. And, and they finally killed him because he, he just wouldn't die as quick from starvation. <laughs> Imagine that. So they killed him by lethal injection. Injection. I know. Yeah. Like um, th- that's an amazing story that not too many people know. Yeah. And World War Two is a huge part of our, our history, especially in America, you know, uh, but not too many people know that story. It's like, how incredible is that? Like when you just ha- hear that or when you first learned about that, like how incredible. Yeah. Well, you know, I think uh, actually when I first heard about it, I was like, eh, that's mm-hmm. cool. But like <laughs> it's more like as I get older and as I meet like uh, married people and how much they love their kids. And like, yeah. as I'm around priests and friar Franciscans more yeah. often, it's mm-hmm. like, uh, yeah, I mean, it really becomes like a supreme act of selfless love, like in, in a very close imitation of Jesus and like, uh, yeah, I mean, his giving himself up and then just his, his will to live and to mm. minister. He's like St. Paul, like, yeah. you know, converting his prison guard, converting his prison guards. Yes. Yes, he was yes, probably yes. just in chains, just singing and praising away. I mean, it's just, uh, it really is um, an outstanding witness. It's incredible. An incredible story that more, uh, that I hope it comes out through in history in the, the high school students, elementary, that, uh, it, you know, if they stumble upon this or somebody tells them the history of of what happened in Auschwitz and not just, you know, uh, uh, St. Maximilian Kobe, but but I'm sure, you know, all the horrific things that happened in, in, in during those times of World War Two. But I hope they do hear that story, you know, and, and, and I think some, I think I remember too, that, uh, in history class, I know they were mentioning about the Catholic priests, a lot of them, uh, cause it wasn't just Jewish people. It was, uh, like gypsies, a lot of people disabled, they were killed, you know, like, uh, genetic selection, like get rid of the weak, which is horrible, which that's why we fight today for, for all the dignity of life, no matter who you are. So, and, but I remember they learned about the Catholic priests. A lot of them went to the concentration camp. So it's a good thing to remember as a way we can never forget. So I love history. And I, I saw that, uh, the story is so fascinating. It's incredibly fascinating. Yeah. Well said. Well, like, uh, let, let, let me try, huh? <laughs> oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> so, uh, s- to transition into geekdom, uh, there's another movie that I watched oh. recently about the priests in, uh, I can't remember if they're at, at is it Auschwitz? Anyways, there's one of the cities, the Polish city or the cities that had a whole um what are they called? Um prison camp. Mm-hmm. There's another gulag, there's another word. Okay, gul- uh, that, that's like the Soviets gulag concentration uh, camps. Concent- work concentration camps. camps. Yeah. Yes. There was one that was specifically made just for priests. And there was was hundreds or thousands, Mm -hmm. I think, there. And so 
the movie the movie there's a movie mm. it's called the ninth day the ninth I'm gonna, okay the ninth day yep. i love movies i'm gonna have to check that out uh-huh, the ninth, uh-huh. the so ninth there's day. a priest one of the priests is from like luxembourg and he's in this uh he's in this prison camp and he is uh selected like he gets a reprieve he gets nine days to go back to luxembourg and there's all this political intrigue you might actually understand it better than me like i enjoy the movie but i didn't understand like all the political details because like i like history but i don't spend a lot of time getting really getting into it but um he goes back to luxembourg and then there's all this political intrigue between the bishop and the german officials and like his little country is invaded by the germans but the, his bishop is like hiding out, trying not to succumb to their power. And like, he's this like go between between the German commandant and the Luxembourg officials and the bishop. And anyways, it's really fascinating. And uh, it, it also uh, shows because um, the priests, they're all in this prison camp and they try to celebrate mass, but the guards come in and then uh, the Pope, uh, which was Pope uh, Paul, the 12th, John uh, Pope, Pius the twelfth. Pope Pius. He yes. like he like asked for some uh, special permission for these priests to be able to celebrate mass, and he like sent this wine that they needed. Mm. So the guards get the wine, but then they like, you know, they're German guards. They don't care, right? So they mistreat and they make them drink it all, and they make fun of. Anyways, it's really sad. Do you know but what it's really year powerful. the movie came out? Do you know what year? Is it new uh, or is I, it like kind of within the last? Is it an older I, movie? Do you know I about? Think it's, yeah, somewhat recently. Because that, um, yeah, that 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 that's gonna be our geekdom right there. I like that. That's a good movie. I love movies. Love, love, a huge movie lover. And I've not heard yeah. of that. You said it was the ninth. What was it? The ninth. Uh, the, the ninth, ninth day. The ninth day. Okay, I'm gonna have to check yeah. that out. Yes, I like that. Yeah. You guys want to check that out? Ninth day. Um, any any noticeable actors? Or, I mean, oftentimes, in, unfortunately, in religious movies or themed movies, they don't get a lot of big names. Mm-hmm. You're not going to see uh, Leo, like yeah. you know, as as, as Saint Maximilian Kobe. I mean, that would be pretty awesome. You know, they get Brad right. Pitt or just have him grow a beard. Or, but usually, you won't yeah. see these mainstream actors that are in, and that's unfortunately because I know a lot of Christians uh, we enjoy movies, you know, and sometimes we want more. No, a lot of times we want more, you know religious themes movie they don't have to be like the uh you know pure flicks i'm not talking about some of them are uh bad <laughs> some of them i do enjoy uh, but pure flicks some of them are cheesy and uh, religious <laughs> movies don't have to be yeah, cheesy yeah. yeah there's some good ones yeah so yeah the ninth um yeah I, I think these le- i think these lead actors are famous in germany mm. uh, apparently it's a german movie so oh, okay okay uh, i haven't heard of the names but mm, okay yes I apparently like it got some awards too oh so. wow okay so german it's a film, film award best feature film 2005 okay so not too too it's not an old old like well when when, when nowadays we say oh like my kids are like oh well that's an old movie i was like well sure. it's it's, it's like nine night. years yeah. ago. Come on, I was like, they're on. So yeah, to me, to, in the 2000s, that's, when I say old, I'm talking about like uh, Planet of the Apes or something right. in the 70s, all the President's Men. Well, I think of 70s, yeah. maybe 80s. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, yes, I like that. The, the Ninth Day. We, you guys got to check that out. You're into yeah. movies. You guys got to go, get some popcorn, get a Diet Coke, get some food, chill around. You know, obviously, <laughs> we can't go to the movie theaters, but... Pop that right. in, you know, go to Blockbuster. I'm like, oh, wait, wait, I thought I was in, uh, I thought I was in 2001 right now. No, not <laughs> Block. I mean, I'm just kidding. I'm just yeah. kidding. Uh, Redbox or uh, Amazon Prime probably has it in there. I- I'm sure it yeah. might be a little bit difficult film to find uh, because it's older and it's not. You know, there's not a lot of. Uh, let's just say Americans aren't clamoring for foreign german films about uh catholic priest <laughs> you know, so right. I, I, would, I would imagine in the prison camps yeah. exactly i would apparently, imagine that apparently apparently you can watch it on uh, amazon prime mm. so. oh, great 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 yeah, yeah so uh brother brandon berg i want to thank you for coming in for faith reason and geekdom Thank you, thank you, all you guys watching. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. You guys are going to enjoy this. You guys will come back, and we're going to have you on there frequently, frequently, God willing. I'm so glad that we're Mm. able to meet up. I am so appreciated. So appreciate everything that you do doing this, doing this with me. Thank you. Thank you. I cannot cannot thank you enough. I'm Roger, your genuflexer for faith, reason, and geekdom, brother. Brandon Berg, you want to sign us off, do a quick little prayer or 
Amen. Amen. Yeah, keep flexing. Uh, yeah, it's an honor to be on the uh, episode. Mm-hmm. And uh, how about we just finish off with a glory be? Mm. Yes, 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 yes. We should do that. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Son Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father Brandon Berg, for being here. Thanks for having me. Peace.